this edition of NSFW, we... Special Report. This is terrible, terrible news. I'm, I'm sinking. The other, actually yesterday I, uh, I drove my uh, wife's car into a... Ace Tech. Oh, well, that's, you know what? I'm that's just watching it go by on the chat room. Yeah, it's an interesting stead. I wanted... Special Report. you love from people you trust this is twit bandwidth for nsfw is brought to you by cashfly at c-a-c-h-e-f-l-y dot com this is nsfw episode 90 for tuesday august 23rd 2011 mo dinga mo problems this episode of NSFW is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. And squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account for six months, Go to squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW8. Bring in the next pony. Um, hi, hi, princess, horse. How are you? Um, I don't know what you do. Oh, I do everything. <laughs> but you burned down my house yesterday with the sun. I know oh, you did it. No. You said you did it. No, with fire. No. Fire that we both you had. No, I don't remember that. You saw it. You had it because you uh, brought it. You had the fire. No, and then I don't remember it. There was a lot of laughing. No, <laughs> you were laughing though. You were the one uh, laughing. And say you did that. Uh, it, was, well, it was a little funny though, right? It was pretty funny. Really, it would have been funny. Uh, but I am now homeless, so ah, uh, party pooper. It's really not that funny anymore. <laughs> it was still a little funny. And can I get you some fruit? Uh, are you, do you like bananas? Uh, yeah. I guess I'll take a banana. Oh, good, good. So, uh, you know, I'm, let me reach right in I, here. My I haven't eaten a long time. Banana bag. Because my house got burned down. In oh. case I haven't mentioned that. No, but if you're also wait, offering free wait, homes, hold to let me in. just clarify something. You are a noob that likes bananas. Right? I, 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 I don't know where we're going with this. Okay, let me yes, just, let like me just clarify this. Let me just clarify it real quick. You are a bitch that likes bananas, right? Yes. Uh, I. Uh, you are. You know, I'm you just really are, angry. I was hey, really hey. You it. are a bitch that likes bananas, Food. right? I don't. I yes. Guess I am. You're yes. a bitch that likes bananas. Yeah. I you're guess a I bitch am. that likes yeah. bananas. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. great. Cause you're about to go bananas. Joined as always by my inimitable co host, one Justin Robert Young, the eighth. What is going on, J R Y X I I? I've slain I'm the seven previous Justin Robert Young so I could be with you here tonight. Uh, Brian, it's a jam packed, gosh darn show tonight. It's so jam packed, I couldn't fit that profanity in. I had to slip in a gosh darn. You want to know why? <laughs> Because we are being joined, uh, not only later in the show, by our friend, Jonathan Mann, the Song of Day Man on YouTube, with a fantastic, awesome, uh, elaborate rock opera of a project that we will uh, go over tonight. But also, joining us, our old friend, ladies and gentlemen, the woman that is too hot for Google Plus, Dr. Kirsten Sanford. Dr. Kiki joins us. Dr. Hi Kiki, there. what is going on, Kiki? Now, what is this business about you being too hot for Google Plus? What's up with this? Do uh, Google Plus? They can't handle the doctor. 
That's all there is <laughs> no. to it. <laughs> well, I, see, I didn't know what any of this was about, but I got a tweet randomly that's saying, yeah, you got Dr. Kiki on? Why don't you ask her why Google Plus won't let her have her name, but they're okay with old John Smokey. No offense to our good friend, old John Smokey, who apparently has a Google Plus And it's profile. world famous foods. They also have it's world name. famous foods, correct. But but uh, did, they, did they not like, did they think that you made up a name or that your name was so awesome you had to be like an action hero or something? <laughs> no, I think it's part of their terms of service that if you have a professional title in front of your name, like doctor or reverend, something like that, that you, they're going to bounce you, that you, they're going to suspend you. You can't, you can't have a professional title in front of your name. So Dr. Kiki or Dr. Yeah. Kinke is, uh, <laughs> is not allowed under their terms of service. Um, even though I use Dr. Kiki as the name I go by online. Uh, it doesn't matter. So hopefully they, they're going to shift their rules around. Um, I was going to put up a stand and fight against it and not join Google Plus. And, but I... Well, in the, in the words of the chat room, uh, Carl in the chat room is already shouting, Boogle! So right. <laughs> maybe word will get back to the Google folks. And, and they in can fact, fix Google thing. Plus, you know, so in case the <laughs> Boogle wasn't enough. Plus one on that. So I hope that everybody knows that. You hear that, last child of Gallifrey? Roll it up real tight and cram it up your time hole because you're not welcome on Google Plus <laughs> if you just want to use the name doctor. Um, That's right. They, I, I'm sure. Oh, wow. That doctor. was really clever. Yeah, you wouldn't be right. in the middle of like a giant uh, Doctor Who bender right now these nope. days, Justin, right? That you're going <laughs> to drop a last child of Gallifrey <laughs> reference might think, like that. Right? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Uh, hey, talking of which, talk, talk, talking, talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2011 uh, Awkward Transition Hall of Fame nominees are. Talking of which. <laughs> talking talk of which. which. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would actually it's skip the good. waiting period. That's it was right to the hall. The Awkward <laughs> Transition Hall of Fame, talking of which immediately, it was the Michael Jordan of Awkward Transitions, dominating its competition very awkwardly. You realize, as, as, as I always have to, whenever I make an error that bad, I have to normalize it by making that my default way. That's how Chat Realm was born. So uh, talking of which, let's move on to a little event coming up called the Dragon Con. You know anything about this thing? Dragon Con yes. 2, Double Complete Dragon? As we know. Thousands of dragons are sold into slavery each year. Oh, and man. Uh, we gather in Atlanta to celebrate the profits that we all make off it. And that's what Dragon Con is before it turned into a group gathering of nerds and geeks to celebrate nerd and geek. Uh, there's a troubling history to this event, Brian, but nonetheless, we will be a part of it. At I'm, waiting, I'm Sunday, waiting to see how you spin this around and make this somehow good. <laughs> So the dragons, uh, what happened You're to the dragons there? the forced subjugation of thousands of dragons and then the willful party and demonstration of excess and wealth on their brutal, brutal enslavement isn't a cheery thought. This is Talking of which, we're doing a live show next <laughs> Sunday from now. We're calling it Lots of Laughs for the Dragons <laughs> who are in bondage. <laughs> Wait, we're dragon tears of laughter is what we're calling it, actually. <laughs> and then I open a beer bottle in its eye socket. Um, no, no, okay. No. Under you a scale, it? under a scale, Justin. Oh, all right, sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they got these hard scales. You just pop the beer cap right underneath one of those scales. <laughs> right off. You don't need to stick it in his eye socket. That's just animal brutality. You know, this is why we have the calming influence of Dr. Kiki on the show. <laughs> to say very salient and important mature life lessons like, Justin, don't open your beer bottle in the dragon's eye socket. Use a scale. <laughs> there we go. We got a poster right here. We got Dragon Con NSFW live Sunday night at, um, at uh, uh, what, at 8 o'clock in, in the, the Crystal Ballroom. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you, dude. Last year, not only was it one of the best NSFW episodes of all time, it was easily one of my favorite events in all of Dragon Con history. It was electric. We packed the small room. They now have us in the big room. But here's the thing. Last year, we didn't really campaign because we had a small room. We weren't really worried about filling it up. We figured, you know, we'll get a few fans. That'll be fine. But the Crystal Ballroom is big. It's so big that we need to pack the place, and that's why we're kicking it over to you guys. No one has ever filled it. 
It is the capacity <laughs> like of be... seven billion people. It's it's uh, yes exactly. They the last time they filled it was at the uh, the Dragon Labor Union meeting, and it was a lot of unhappy dragons in there. And then they burned the place down. And since they rebuilt it, no humans have ever filled. No, no. In fact, it's only taking it's taking two amulets and a haunted dirk. That has led us to this point where we've broken the curse on the door. And we will perform there next, or sorry, September 4th, 8.30 at DragonCon. You have to get a, a day pass or whatever to DragonCon. But the, the, the tickets to the entire, like, four-day convention are not really all expensive. It's, like, a little over 100 bucks, But it is so worth it. Everybody, it's going to be amazing. But... It's only going to be there for people who are going to be able to get to Atlanta. And since we are, of course, of Chat Realm, wherever they might be, the worldwide influence of Chat Realm is something we always take into account, especially for really the Super Bowl of NSFW shows, which is what Dragon Con, Con of a Dragon 2, Double Complete Dragon is going to be. So, Brian, we wanted to get a little community involvement, right? Yes. Well, it, it, this is twofold, okay? Number one, we've got to get buzz going for this thing. We want handouts, and we already got some killer ones. People took the horse boy making out with alien picture and, uh, and put, yeah, it's kind of like that, NSFW show Crystal Ballroom. But here's the other thing. You think about all the stuff they have going on, we're going to have a bunch of industry luminaries in this room. we got talent scouts out there looking for ideas, and we wanted to promote the fact that I am in pitch black darkness and have no working <laughs> webcam. There I am. Uh, and so what we wanted to do... It's all part of the dramatic effect. See, Brian, the next time you do that, when it goes black, just be like, it's because... And then just silence until you pop that. <laughs> Pause for effects. <laughs> and then you die. No, uh, here's what we want to do. We want to we want to visualize what the NSFW movie would be, right? You, you, we want you guys who can't physically be there for the actual show to have a presence. You could make the fake movie poster that makes um, uh, you, that makes uh, I don't know the. One of the chicks from Firefly laugh because she'll be in the audience in my imagination. Dude, absolutely. Here's the thing, Brian. Uh, Dragon Con, which let's be honest, roll the dice with Dragon Con, or I mean Comic Con. Dragon Con's where it's wow. at. It's it's way to go. Um, they have all these big, huge movie studios coming in there with their pictures, and they just like you know they cast some random dude off Cold Case as a hero for a movie, and then they debut a poster, and it's like a picture of. Uh, you know, Scarlet Witch's, uh, the hem of her dress, and it's like, witching season next summer. You know, but they have these little teaser posters. We figure, why can't we do that? Okay? We're better than Scarlet Witch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you hear that? We'll say it to your face, Scarlet Witch. <laughs> We're better than you. We're way better exactly. than you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we just do it. Jammer B, just keep it on me. I have the, the, the pictures here. We've, uh, uh, actually, Brian, as we've been talking, people have been sending us in teaser posters. Can you yes, believe already. it? Now, keep in mind, you don't have to stop with your creativity with just a teaser poster. If you want to put together a short uh, movie teaser or a full-on trailer, some kind of epic thing, like as if we were doing a movie of NSFW, that would be awesome in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, yes. we can, and we could use that. We, we, are, we, are, we are going to have, uh, this is going to be kind of a contest, though. So we're going to have everybody send in stuff. Uh, this week. So on next week's show, when we have Joe and Biagio on, we're going to right. select a, a couple finalists. And then That's at right. Dragon Con, on stage, it will be audience choice as to who is the official NSFW show teaser yep. poster for a movie that will never happen. <laughs> So here we go. Well, hold on, you don't know that it'll never happen. This first one here, right. very simple, just the Diamond Club brackets. Says it, you know, kind and, of a and dark. Just, just so everybody knows, if we had an NSFW show movie, it would be released on Friday. Um, yes. So here right, we so go. What else? Uh, you got? What else? That, got? That's, that's simple, the first one. Not much to it. Yeah, it there we go. Then maybe on. character posters. So <laughs> there we go. Just a big, big me grilling the camera and showing off some questionable dental work on my uh, front tooth. <laughs> Then maybe uh, Brian. There we go. Yep. Let's very, very let's meet happy. the characters. Right? Cheerful. Yep. I'm, I'm the like, uh, I'm the McCartney to your Lenin, and by Lenin I mean the one who caused communism. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so this is you kind of coming into people's world, right? Now, Kiki, you see that on a on a, on a, a you know at your local movie theater. Are you intrigued? What's your initial reaction? My initial reaction is I'm wondering if he's in a submarine. 
<laughs> well, there we maybe, go. Maybe maybe it should be in a submarine. submarine. Maybe that's what the movie's about. So, Two some guys kind of a, some kind of a port in a hole. submarine. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. This one maybe a little bit more. This one looks like a bar flyer. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> It really this does. Looks it looks like, like we're there hosting karaoke nights. I'm I'm <laughs> gonna throw this one out. This one's not. This one looks like we do a wacky shtick and then you and I sing "I Got You, Babe" at the end of the evening. I might pay money for that. I'll tell you what, not a bad way to end the show, Brian. File that one under things we should probably do if we want to be popular. Maybe at Dragon Con. Maybe we'll end it with you and me sinking. <laughs> I got you, babe. Babe. I got you, babe. So here we go. Uh, this is another one. This is maybe a little bit more involved. Uh, Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young, they're everywhere but Cuba. NSFW show the movie, selling children for $7 and a bucket of chicken, which is, I think, something I said at some point. <laughs> Uh, you you might have been talking about dragons. I think they overheard that we were selling dragons for seven bucks and a, and yeah. a taco. All right, here we go. This one's a pretty good one. Uh, 2012, the club is coming. It just has uh, a shot of the the, the Rhett and Link's set. fingers. Rhett and Link doing the diamond club symbol. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. The club is coming. This film is not even reality. But, Brian, I think we actually have a leader in the clubhouse. Yeah, no, they, everything we've seen has been a great start, but this is the real work right here. This one tells a story. It says Dragon Con, Con of a Dragon 2, Double Complete Dragon, and there's the silhouette of a dragon with one of us riding on it and the other one dangling by the leash of the dragon down there. Uh, not sure if that's dragon bondage, like um, if it's no, an escaped no. slave dragon or not. I like to think this is the Nat Turner's Rebellion of the dragon <laughs> legacy that we set up earlier in the show. So this this is the direction we want to go. We want to see that stuff. But keep in mind, we need it by next week. Next Tuesday, Joe and Biagio are going to be joining us, and we're going to pick in the dark. We're going to pick which of the uh, uh, which of these goes on to uh, Dragon Con. Uh, and, and, and one more, I should say one more thing about Dragon Con. This is not specifically Dragon Con related, but uh, it is related in so far as everything that is awesome about Dragon Con is what's awesome about this book I've been reading. Um, Kiki, Dr. Kiki. Yes. Darkness yeah. fell over Brian as he made his recommendation. <laughs> come, to, come to the I'm light, I'm going to narrate Brian. it. I'm going to gonna narrate the, the darkness this time, Brian. <laughs> do, you, uh, do you read books? You read the books, Dr. Kiki? I, I like the books. I, I, I've read a couple of them. You ever read these things called uh, books? I what do you think? Sort of... You got this stuff. It's made from this, you know, these, these trees. They make it the paper, you know? You know uh, they put, talk put little, little squiggles oh. on the pages. I like the pictures. No. Uh, in all seriousness, I just finished. Uh, I just finished a book, and uh, this this is not. Everyone thinks we're about to start doing an audible ad or something. No, this is not an ad, except for they something that I'm so passionate about. And, and we, I want, fact, would like I to, want to be the first person to recommend this book to you guys personally. Uh, Ernie Klein is uh, is the guy who wrote Fanboys back in the day, and mm -hmm. there was a whole controversy about whether or not the movie turned out the way it was supposed to, and whether you know the Weinstein company did what they were going to do. But uh, but Ernie Klein has has written a novel that will blow your brains out, all out of the back of the, of the wall. Imagine if the Da Vinci Code wasn't in the dark, <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> what, what, imagine if the Da Vinci Code was was not totally stupid and about dumb old art, but instead was about a hunt for uh, for an Easter egg in a giant MMO world that was obsessed with geek culture and eighties uh, uh, pop culture. I'm gonna unplug this this uh, in the dark. Just go power um, through it. And, power through it. Okay, but look, I'm telling you. Here's the thing. Everybody is going to be talking about this book within a month or so. So what you got to decide nice. now. If you want to be the guy who's in on it early or the guy who has to hear 8 million of your friends tell you that you ought to read it, it, uh, it, it actually is a premise that, that works to, to rope you into it. And it's this awesome mashup culture where there is a sensible reason for why X-Wing fighters are flying around Voltrons and <laughs> shooting... Uh, <laughs> Rubik's Cubes. I mean, it's awesome. It is so and incredibly what is good. the book I called? Love it. Everybody wants to know since you've been Ready hiding it. Ready Player One. And if you there do we... the audiobook, it's the audiobook is read by Will Wheaton. But uh, man, this nice. is this is this has geek culture written all over it. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the article I read it was the weirdest thing. Uh, Ernie Klein has been a buddy of mine for over a decade, and I was going to the airport just Friday, and I see he's on the cover 
of Austin Chronicles standing in front of a DeLorean holding a, a Ghostbusters trap. And I find out that this thing, this thing's going to be so successful, the movie rights went for a half million dollars, and he got a half nice. million dollar advance. This thing is going to be huge. You guys got to jump in. I finished it this afternoon. Awesome, awesome story. I loved it, and you should love it, too. I want to so drink the Geek Culture tea. I want in. I want in. Yeah. Done and so done. Get it. Uh, get it. And by the way, just so everybody who's listening audio style uh, realizes, what's happening is that periodically, and number one, get Ready Player One. I don't want to step on that because uh, I am very much looking forward to reading it. Brian has been done nothing but rave about it to me when I've talked to him on the phone uh, about this book. Uh, so everybody go get it. No doubt, absolutely. I'm going to explain to everybody when we, when we make these black out references. Why were you, why you were laughing at me? Uh, every five seconds, uh, Brian's webcam just goes totally black. <laughs> it's, totally, it's totally fine now. I restarted it, so we're okay. And now, now. it's fine. Okay. Yeah. So okay. now it would be inappropriate for me to start saying, you can't start a fire, can't start a fire without a spark. Brian yes, brushes exactly. for hire. Even if he's podcasting in the dark. In the I was dark. dancing in the dark. That is true. That is true. Um, and, uh, don't so make any Metallica reference song from. references, though, about darkness. No, no. Imprisoning Brian. I believe in nothing called love. Uh, okay, so look, let's. Uh, uh, everyone, everyone needs to check out Ready Player One before you're the guy who doesn't uh, get a chance to know what everyone sure. else is talking about. But we actually should take a moment to thank a real sponsor, not a fake sponsor. My my friend Ernie, whose book is totally awesome and is going to be the new Bible of geekdom, uh, but instead uh, a real one. For example, Justin. Um. Air. Air. Why don't we have air sponsors? The, the, the stuff we breathe? Yeah. Um, no. Ma well, I mean, maybe insofar as... I mean, we just make these up, right? No. We're just, no. We're just screwing around no, yeah. here? No, Are we, we horsing have off? Actual... Are we, we have ubiquitous, but it doesn't have much cash money. We, we, mm. <laughs> maybe, I mean... maybe over-the-air transmissions. What if you could get things delivered to you over the air to enjoy through the air? What, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to saddle up the air with a saddle? You're going to put a tight little saddle on the air? Ride it around? No, Netflix. Do Netflix. checks on the I air? I'm, I'm trying to mention that this show is brought to you by Netflix. And if you go to Netflix.com slash twit, you can get a free 30-day trial where you will have movies delivered to you wirelessly over your Wi-Fi, if you have Wi-Fi. And it could go straight to your Xbox 360, your Nintendo Wii console, your PS3, your iPad, your iPhone, delivered wirelessly through the air. So, sure, kind of built them with air. We're talking about right. thousands of All titles. Right. Plus, they yeah. got Blu-ray titles, DVD delivered in one business day from their bazillions of shipping centers. And uh, 30 days for free. You can watch all the movies there ever were in 30 days. Scientific fact. Dr. Kiki, Here's can you confirm that? <clears throat> Scientific fact. Brian, uh, That's, uh, we're all sick go. of having, having the net be so goddamn inert, sitting around like a big fat toad burping at us. No. Flicks it all over the gosh darn world with Netflix. It just takes its finger, its flicky finger, and flicks it onto your iPad, iPhone, Apple TV. You want to know what? Are you, are Here's you a fun thing are about you comparing, Netflix. Are you comparing movies to errant bugs that are on your body that need to be flicked yes. aside? Yes. Is that what you imagine imagine uh, the world of culture as a man sweating, terrified, <laughs> as a horde of bugs representing movies and television shows, <laughs> literally covers his entire body. And Netflix is a helpful little imp that crawls up and flicks each bug through the ether into your life. <laughs> On demand. Netflix.com slash twit. Free 30-day <laughs> trial. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Uh, look, here's the thing. Dr. Kiki, I don't know if you heard this, but... Um, the earthquakes are loose. They've broken out of their pen in California. They're now rampaging all over. I mean, this is, as I understand it, I'm not sciencey like you, but as I, I heard understand they knocked it, over lawn furniture. Uh, the the, yeah. the earthquakes, yeah. they're Nothing running loose. Nothing is safe. Hide your geraniums. The <laughs> earthquakes are loose. That's right. So, <laughs> hide your geraniums. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there's an earthquake <laughs> running around Eastern America. In the suburban Rockville <laughs> neighborhood of Maryland. They're knocking over your geranium. <laughs> They're shaking everybody. Everybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the earthquakes are loose. Um, here's the thing. We have a theory. The that this is only the today. Beginning. 
the whistling of a thousand housewives screaming, my geraniums! It's better than the hydrangeas. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so glad no one died in this natural disaster. None of these jokes would be funny. They would all yeah, be yeah. This is, I funny. should I should point out that like earlier today we're like, well, what happened with the earthquake? They're like, nobody died. I'm like, let me get this straight. It's a major natural disaster, and there's no fatalities. And they're like, this is None. like this is like epic uh, comedy god gift from above. They're like, here's an earthquake in an unusual place. P.S. Nobody died. And so I'm just like, yes. Um, <laughs> These earthquakes, though, they're only the beginning. Things are just going to get weirder. Uh, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria type of thing. So uh, we, we know that you are about to have your phone ring off the hook with people who want you to be their science person on the spot to talk That's to right. your CNNs, your CNBCs, your twits. And uh, I need you to be ready. So we have some scenarios cooked up, some possible things that we think may be about to occur. We'd like you to chime in as the science expert, if we can. We'll kind of simulate... Run you through the simulator here at right. Twit of, of what may may come to pass. Does that sound good? Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. So let's here we go. Simulate. Let's uh, let's, uh, let's right, run so, so. let's run the Twit simulator. Run the Twit simulator of regular programming. We <laughs> don't. <laughs> okay. Is this is this where I'm supposed to play a video? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's you. I thought there was going to be like a breaking news cue. <laughs> no, no, you got to no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, play they're all, they're all <laughs> play any of those. Okay. Yes. So, we got it all try, worked out. Try, okay, Tony, edit this out. Yeah, yeah. Tony, leave this in. <laughs> yeah. But then also scream, my geraniums, before you do it. Okay. All right, so run the simulator. I was going to say, what we were simulating terrible, was the beginning of the universe. Terrible, terrible universe. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. One more time. All right. Run the simulator. This is terrible, terrible news. I'm, I'm sinking. Special report. This is Justin Robert Young with a breaking Twit News update. The 5.8 earthquake that rocked Mineral, Virginia, was apparently only the opening salvo for a race of mole people to invade the Earth. Their leader, known only as Modinga, has written a hand-scrawled letter to the President of the United States, which reads as follows. Modinga, Modinga. Yeah, Modinga. Followed by over 4,000 question marks. American authorities, while never mentioning the word surrender, did tell reporters that all options were on the table. Who are these mole people? Why do they cause earthquakes? For more on this, let's go to Brian Brushwood in the Newsplex. Brian. Uh, Justin, it literally could not be a bigger news day if Steve Jobs himself had a bowel movement in the middle of a keynote. To get its perspective on the science side of things, we're going to talk a bit about it with one Dr. Kirsten Stanford. Dr. Kiki, what can you tell us about the molepocalypse? The molepocalypse seems to be happening. <laughs> that's, that's, and, uh, Excellent. would you say, <laughs> tell us a bit about. We'll be back the, uh, to our regular scheduled program. <laughs> <laughs> back to, back to, back to, back to, back to, Let's run the simulator. It's just into the Twit News Center. I'm Justin Robert Young. Modinga, leader of the mole race, continues his march to Washington, D.C., leading an army of 40 to 43 mole men. Modinga could reach the Capitol by nightfall. Early reports that Modinga's troops would be distracted by throwing newspapers and old coffee grounds at them has been proven unfounded. Eyewitness reports are now saying that the Molemen have learned to brew even more coffee from the seemingly already spent grounds and now have a knowledge of the extended 10-day weather forecast. Authorities advise you stay in your homes as the military converges in the White House to defend our republic against the subterranean menace. Who knew mole men drink coffee? How far can they walk? Should you feel bad asking one of the mole men if it's going to rain this weekend? For more on this, let's go to Brian Brushwood in the News Village. Brian? No! Oh! 
God damn, your face is on fire. I'm Brian Brushwood, live in the field, and we are joined here by science reporter Dr. Kirsten Sanford. Please tell us a little bit about this shocking development of fully sentient mole people out above the surface. Let's talk a bit about Molemageddon, Dr. Kiki. Well, there were signs of Molemageddon for many, many, many moons prior to this especially beneath coffee shops. Coffee shops have been the, sub, the subterranean refuges of the mole people. They've learned to brew the perfect cup, and you'll find that you'll drink every drop. Thank you, Dr. Kiki. It looks like there's more trouble brewing. Back to the Twit regularly scheduled programs. <laughs> you killed me up. This is Justin Robert Young with a Twit News Live breaking alert. A stunning turn of events as an unlikely force has halted the process, the progress of Modinga and his 40 to 43 Mole Man army. The Winklevostridge, the combined form of Tyler and whatever Winklevoss from that movie about the website, stormed over Capitol Hill to single handedly dismantle the enemy forces using its wings and unbearably talkative nature. Like, seriously, it wouldn't shut up. Do feathers hurt moles? Do they ever shut up, seriously? For more on this, let's go to Brian Brushwood of the News Cage, Brian. OMG, WTF, LOL, BBQ, what a wrinkle winkle. We are here live on the scene with Science <laughs> Advisor, I'm Dr. Kiki Sanford. Let's talk about the Vostrich, my ostrich. <laughs> Well, it's a little known fact that the mole people actually like birds, but the Vostrich, the Winkle Vostrich, yeah, that's one damn annoying bird. Even a highly caffeinated mole man would have absolutely no patience for such a, a, an organism, a thing. They're out of here. Uh, very informative, Dr. Kiki. It looks like the mole men certainly aren't birds of a feather. Back to the regularly scheduled TWIT programming. We'll be back with live updates. Yeah, we're uh, getting comfortable in the new digs here. Knock it over the tequila. Our, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We had to drink it a little. For TWIT News Live Update, I'm Justin Robert Young. Shame and derision showered upon one-time heroes the Winklevostridge after a power play that was, well, for the birds. It all started when the victorious magical combination of those twins from that one movie with the kid from Zombieland in it attempted to seize control of America by showing Congress proof that they had initially hired Thomas Jefferson to draft them a similar country before the founding fathers strang them along while he invented not, uh... America. Among the evidence presented was a series of text messages from Jefferson to an unnamed friend where he reportedly wrote, Hear ye, hear ye. These two are so dumb they smell each other's butts for fun. Congress was in the process of turning over ownership of the country on the weight of the evidence presented before a starburst created an explosion which projected a tiny cylindrical fragment of a meteor through the brain of the Winklevostridge, killing it dead. Should you let your kids play with starbursts? Why did Thomas Jefferson have text messages? For more on this, let's go to Brian Brushwood in the News Blender. Brian. <laughs> Live here at the News Center and going right now to our science advisor, one Kirsten Sansford. That's right. Thomas Jefferson, he was a scientist. Back to Brilliant you, Brilliant commentary, Dr. Kiki. I guess this one is done. <laughs> and whether that's true or not, uh, apparently Web West... Uh, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's promised this. Oh my gosh, there's a spider on the table. Well, there's a spider on the table. Special report. Ryan Squares Place. Squares Place. <laughs> com is not how you say the name of our, <laughs> our sponsor, Squarespace. But God damn it, wouldn't that be a hilarious name? That's why I use my personal website, squaresplace.squarespace.com. So why far. would you put two things that sound remarkably similar <laughs> together? In, well, I'll tell you why, Brian. I'm glad you asked. I do it because there's so much goddamn value in Squarespace. It makes me cry. I sit alone in my house at night and I start crying, saying, "Distributed rack hosting. Oh, oh, my website will never go down if Reddit or Ding link." 
links to a story I put up on squaresplace.squarespace.com. Also, despite the fact that I have the creative talent of a dragon that's had its brain bashed in by a ball peen hammer, I can still use their award-winning, beautiful templates, and then I start crying again. I have tears rolling upon other tears as my shirt soaks through, revealing just a disgusting, hideous body. Squarespace.com. Offer code NSMW8. But here's the important part. They can get a free two-week trial, so you can host squarespace.squarespace.com, and, uh, and it won't go down. And it'll look fantastic because they got built-in templates that rock your face off. You can update it on the fly from your iPad, your iPhone, or other mobile device. And I'm in the dark. Back to you, Justin. <laughs> Everything that Brian said is true. And if any of you have a problem with it, I'll literally punch you in the face. That's the squarespace.squarespace <laughs> guarantee. That's, and I wrote it on the site. You got any problem with what we just said? Knuckle sandwich, a coming your way. And it's gonna start from back here, and it's gonna end in your nose. Squarespace.squarespace.com, and go to squarespace.com and use our offer code, NSFW8. Bet you might be tempted to use other offer codes. Well, I got two hands. <laughs> <laughs> and they're ready for punching. Squarespace. Uh, <laughs> So you're I, I'm sorry, Justin, it, it's, I, and I don't mean to break the fourth wall here, but it sounds like you're threatening to assault anyone who uses a different code for Squarespace than our code, NSFW8, which, granted, it will get you 10% off of Squarespace. Uh, I, I don't know that you should physically threaten people to, uh, are, is that okay with our sponsor? What are you, the cops now? <laughs> I'm not saying that. No, I gotta tell you I'm if just I am. Saying, He's ready. I'm just saying it'd be a shame if somebody got, you know, a good old fashioned fist to the mouth. To <laughs> okay. Uh, NSFW8. <laughs> eight, because that's the month we're in. NSFW8. Hey, man, uh, do, we got, do we got any friends who came and visited us today? This is a fantastic, this is a special episode. We got all kinds of good friends returning back to the show. We had Dr. Kiki. Who else we got? Uh, well, uh, we have, uh, our old friend, Jonathan Mann. Uh, do we have Jonathan Mann patching in live from the Bay Area? Oh, yes. I think yeah. we do. Let's see. Video. New, new Skype. I'm not used to it. No Where's one is. the video thing? <laughs> <laughs> the chat room is helpfully saying, listen, man, you need to get your Skype working. All right. Are you setting us? Yeah, well, we can rock the the audio only until you get it figured out. Uh, yeah. First of all, this well, is unprecedented for us to have a third timer in the summer music series. I yes. Mean, what is this? Yes. We, we couldn't get. We couldn't think. We couldn't find anyone, so we go back and knock oh, on John. God damn it! Again. Stop it, Brian, or I'm going to give you the old Squares Place treatment. <laughs> you know, <laughs> shut your smart mouth. Uh, now here's the deal. I am here. Oh wait, I did it. I did it. I think I did it. Woohoo! Uh. Ab absolutely. All right, so here's the deal. I had this idea, and uh, it's something that I, I certainly could never do because I'm not talented, uh, but I knew that there is one man whose skill set was perfect for it. So I, I had this idea, and I went to Jonathan that, you know, the, the election's happening, right? And everybody likes to hear about the election. It's obviously a very important time in our nation's history every four years. Um, but Someone who's socially uh, plugged in and smart and amazing songwriter. Obviously, Jonathan Mann, of course, has written a song a day. You're coming up on a thousand songs, right? That's right. September 28th is a thousand songs. Holy crap. If you have not gone back and just sampled mm -hmm. some of the awesome stuff that Jonathan has done, then please do it. It's uh, The Rock Cookie Bottom on YouTube. But uh, the idea I had is what if you have a talent like Jonathan Mann writing a song oh. about the month's worth of political happenings every month from now, August 2011, to Election Day in 2012. By the end of it, you would have this epic, awesome rock opera that basically told the story, the ebbs and flows of this gigantic, awesome uh, process. So, Jonathan, uh, you were into it, right? You, and and you, you were going to debut the first installment of that right here tonight. 
Yeah, I think I, you know you 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 brought this to me, and I thought I thought it sounded like a pretty good idea. I mean, um, elections are always very ripe for hilarious. Um, they're, for they're a hilarious tragedy so, of errors yeah. that only exactly. yields. More of the same sycophants and weirdos, in the words of one Justin Robert Young. I think I said lizard people, but uh, <laughs> yeah, basically that's that's the same. Um, but no, I, listen, and and it's one of those things where, like, you look back. I mean, because this whole process takes so long, you know, so long. You back, it's so amazing that's already started. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, and like, so by the time that whoever gets elected in 2012, you're gonna be like, oh my, who was Herman Cain? Yeah, you know, right. you're gonna, you have no idea who that dude is, but. Thankfully, we have a chronicler. You, 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 I think of you, Jonathan, as, as a modern-day bard. Yeah. You, know, you are singing the history of, like of our, our great nation. Um, so, so here we go. Uh, it's just called August 2011, or, or is there the subtitle to it? I don't know. I, we should come up with some kind of... I'm bad at naming things. I, I think I just called it, um, you know, August 2011 presidential recap or something like that. So... But she will come up with a better name <laughs> one of these days. Actually, these I was, days. it was between that and also it could be called uh, Michelle Bachman and Rick Perry stuffing their faces. That could also be the, the title of this I'll tell you installment. What. If yeah. that is attractive to you folks, then you need to hear this song. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, performing the first installment in uh, uh, what uh, we will have you on every month. As long as you have a new installment of this right awesome. up until Election Day. <laughs> folks, Jonathan Mann with Michelle Bachman and Rick Perry stuffing their faces. Take it away. Well, it's August 2011. The presidential race is already swinging. The grand old party's looking and looking, but so far they got nothing cooking. You got big boy Romney, 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 wild eyes Bachman, she's so crazy, crazy Herman Cain, he may be crazier, and Bush Rick Perry, he's just scary. Then there is Ron Paul, his name is Ron, <laughs> he makes the most sense of all about what's going on, but he's not taken seriously. He's ignored by everyone on the TV, but they love Palin. No matter what she does, Bachman wins the Iowa straw poll. But Palin is still the front runner because we keep talking about her. We just ignore her. She will go away. August 2011 The front runner hasn't even entered the race The economy sucks And everything's crumbling So here's Bachman and Perry Both stuffing their faces Bachman and Perry Stuffing their faces Amazing! That was epic. That was incredible. And I'll tell you what, I love the idea that this is just the beginning of an epic, uh, my only request, and I yeah. do think it should be an epic rock opera of the election, but I think it should be an epic rock space opera. So if you can have like ah. lizard people come in from the future, okay. that would be awesome. I don't know if there's a place you can work that in, but yeah, really, that should be right, possible. Right. It, 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 it's a long election cycle. We have no <laughs> idea where the space wizards are going to vote right now. The block is wide open. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I'm really awesome, glad you man. got that that picture going because that's very key to the song. I mean, that picture pretty much is the it makes this you know makes the whole thing. I think. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. That. Still, oh my god. 
<laughs> that to me, that's that's August right there. That's the August of the presidential election. That's sums exactly. it up in one image. By the way, because the, the funniest thing about that is, and this is no matter what your political affiliation is, because it happens on both sides of the aisle, is, is Jamery, can you bring that picture up? Uh, and right now what we're looking at for the audio listeners is just a picture of Michelle Bachman and Rick Perry, both. That what, what looks stuffing to me, they are mid-bite. They are, they are just stuffing corn dogs in their mouth <laughs> at the Ames uh, or the Iowa State Fair, which is where the Ames straw poll is always every uh, four years. And right now, people have dumped millions, as any pre presidential campaign, people have said, I believe in you, Michelle Bachman. I believe in you, Rick Perry. Here is millions of my own money. Go out there and be president. And yet they still, part of that process is, let me go to the state fair and put myself in a position where someone can take a picture where it looks like I'm deep throating a corn dog. <laughs> that is an amazing part of our democracy, and I love it. Uh, well, yes, and it makes about as much sense as any other aspect of, uh, of the way we seem to elect our people. Uh, hey, man, we got to wrap things up. Uh, first of all, uh, do you want to talk plugs? Dr. Kiki, what do you got to plug for us? You got something going on. What do you, what's going on? What do I have to plug? I have This Week in Science, which is on Twit Live on Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time. And we have a great, we have great fun after show. Both of you, both of you have been on This Week in Science before. I've uh, never been on we with both you. To, uh, but not with me. Guest yeah. Yes. So I'd love to be on with you sometime. We'll have to do that. We will make, we'll have to make that happen. I think that would be sure. fun. Um, Dr. Kiki Science Hour is on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Pacific Time on Twit. Um, me, oh, and also I'm on Justin TV. I do a science chat on Fridays, which is just me hanging out with the chat room talking about science. It's at noon Pacific time, Fridays. Uh, right that is on. Awesome. Uh, I'm yeah. looking at, uh, uh, look at this. All right, we got, we it's got, a good this time. is great. As a matter of fact, uh, let me see. I don't know who posted it. I'm looking at some of the late entry NSFW posters. This is working out re really well. I think we got some strong contenders right here. Um, as always, you know, I, I, if I promote one thing is just my Google Plus because uh, I love using it, and you get to have real discussions with people. Uh, that's a good one there. That's not the one I was looking at for the for the movie poster. Um, and then, uh, what about you, Justin? What do you got to promote? Uh, I think is that the one you were looking that's at? That's the one. Yes. Big, big podcasters, little problems, which I think might actually have to switch around because either me or Brian are particularly tall. Um, but I there we go. I keep your, poster. Keep your posters poster. coming, folks. Uh, we will have a uh, uh, we, we will cut down the finalists next week. Uh, follow me on Google Plus, despite the fact that uh, uh, Dr. Kiki and the owner of the TARDIS can't get on there with their proper titles. Um, I, I do, I do enjoy it. And eventually I do have faith that the folks out there at the Googleplex will, will come to their senses and let, uh, let, let these fine folks of letters, uh, you know, call themselves what they want for Pete's sake. But, uh, follow me, Justin Young on Google Plus, Justin R. Young on, uh, on, 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 on the Twitter. And then also on iTunes, me and my friend, uh, Ashley Paramore do a show called, uh, The Online Ethicist. We take all the sticky situations that you might get yourself into in uh, online social media stuff, uh, including we talked about the Google Plus uh, name stuff. You can uh, download us on, on iTunes, so just search for Online Ethicist. And now, normally, uh, jo yeah, jo go Jonathan, uh, where, where, where should people check your stuff out? Uh, you can go, I, uh, my album, my new album is available for pre-order at uh, www.jonathanmanmusic.com. Uh, and also I have t-shirts there for sale and uh, brand new screen printed really nice t-shirts and uh, at song a day man is my twitter it's a good place to go as well and you got you got gigs coming up right uh i, I do I saw on your yeah plug those i do uh i have uh they're all in the bay area uh on september 10th i'm playing at this place called the stork club in oakland and then on september 28th is my thousandth song celebration record release show thing uh, with a bunch of special guests and stuff. And that'll be uh, at the Red Devil Lounge on September 28th. You can get tickets uh, via my Bandcamp page, the Jonathan Mann Music page is a good place to go. Uh, let me, let me just tell you this. Uh, if you are a big YouTube fan or you have a YouTube account at all, uh, subscribing to uh, the Rock Cookie Bottom is probably the best value you're going to get on a YouTube account every single day. 
a new song, and they're all awesome. Check that out. Now, Brian, normally this is where we just end the show, or you, right? Yeah, well, a lot of times we ask for, for an encore presentation or something. I should point out one thing, that squaresplace.squarespace.com. Squaresplace, <laughs> a place for squares. <laughs> Screw your circles, Google Plus, is now up and running. So go to squaresplace.squarespace.com and you can check that out. Uh, but yes, normally this is when we ask for you for an encore, but uh, I don't know if you guys remember, had a little bit of a guest last week. Had a bit of a Kickstarter, had a bit of magic happen live on the air, and then we got a thank you gift, Justin. Uh, yeah, so um, Get Set Go were, were on, and they were so nice, and, and they, uh, they wanted to give us a, a gift because a lot of you guys who listen to the show, both on podcast and live, uh, donated very, very heavily to their Kickstarter, and uh, it got funded as of today. So uh, as a thank you note, they wanted to write us our, our new end of the show music and uh jammer b do we have that queued up no uh where would i find that music <laughs> that would be something that i emailed you uh earlier today tony leave all this in <laughs> <laughs> of course i have an email about jonathan mann from you <laughs> hello i can resend it yeah I'll forward it too. Everybody, this, send Jammer B emails. Give, give him, give him, you know, send him a note. Just let send him know. Send him a note. Tell to. him how much you love him. That's Tony at twit.tv. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here we go. It's back off to him. That was good. So uh, I, have, I should set this up. Like, uh, you obviously sent it to me telling me what it was, but I started playing it here in the hotel room earlier today, and John was over there reading an article or something, and about 20 seconds into it, he sort of sets down what he's, what he's reading and looks up, like, what's Brian listening to? And then the reaction when the lyrics came in, his brain's totally exploded everywhere. It's, this, is, this is how we're going to... This is the sweet, sweet lullaby that sends us off to Betty Bye late on a Friday night. <laughs> Okay, so um, I think I'll play it now. Let's see if it works. Yeah, plays. and so so here we go. This will be the new ending music for every NSFW show, but we will, uh, because we, uh, we really do want uh, everybody to listen to it at least once. We're going to play it in its entirety uh, tonight. So uh, also stay tuned to the end of this episode for the uh, Movie Trap Minute with uh, Roberto Villegas. Finally, all the movies are out. Find out who is most likely going to be the winner when we crown them at DragonCon. Uh, Connor the Dragon 2, Double Complete Dragon. Until next week, Brian, die in a fire. It's time to go and I'm so depressed and I'm gonna spend the rest of the week in bed until the next NSFW the show is through and it breaks my heart Cause I just can't bear to be apart from Brian and Justin of NSFW Oh, I'd rather die in a fire Than to spend a single moment without Brian Brushwood Oh, I'd rather be dipped in honey and fed to a big ant pile Than do without Justin Robert Young for even a little while Oh, NSFW I love you I believe Mike TV joined us. There you go. Right now, everybody is asking. Mike TV is shouting, I love you, in the chat room, but everyone else is asking where they can get a hold of it. Um, that's it for this episode of NSFW. Take it away with the Movie Draft Minute, Roberto Villegas. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute. I'm Robert Villegas, still filling in for Chip Blardivlar. 
Achievement Unlocked, all movies released. Let's get to it. Sarah Lane remains in first place with $848.9 million, with Brian Brushwood still in second with $598.8 million. Tom Merritt's in third place with $522 million, with Rise of the Apes bringing in $16 million this week. Cargill's in fourth place with $506.4 million, with Conan the Barbarian bringing in $10 million this week. Justin Robert Young plunges into fifth place with $408.7 million. And bringing up the rear is Jason Howell with $438.7 million. With Spy Kids bringing in a disappointing $11.6 million. That's your Movie Draft Minute. I'm Robert Villegas. SFW tweets move and I'll execute every <laughs> and I'll viral video every Mother every last Friday one last one of you. Exactly. Right, so we got one of these uh, Friday, Friday. <laughs> Doing the show on Friday. Doing the show on Friday. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's tweeting. He's tweeting. <laughs> Dot TV. Okay. If now. only you had a, a a video that would play over the you finishing uh, up your tweet, Brian. Oh, and then I misspelled my stupid tweets. <laughs> anyway, I did HTTP. <laughs> <laughs> we should have our own protocol called HTTP. Get it? Because it's like PP. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. 